Welcome back to Bookstage and Screen. You're here with Gordon and Samantha and we have the amazing Wendy James. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Wendy. Samantha How are you? And Gordon. I'm good, thanks. Good. Oh, thanks good. for having me. Oh, no problem. And I've been wanting to talk to you because I, I think I read it in January, The Golden Child. Um, and usually I have a book in my bag for the gym and a book at home going. And this one is the first one that has gone. I kept reading it at the gym and then I'm like, uh, no, oh, they, they can't stay but... in my gym bag. It has to go right beside my bed. Um, and it was really great, very gripping. So congratulations great. on a great... I'm glad. I, I can't imagine what you do with it at the gym. You, you're just on the <laughs> treadmill or something, aren't you? You're yeah, not yeah I'm on a bike. And, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I should have clarified that. Yes. <laughs> I use it as a weight. No. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, quite Decent nice. sized book. <laughs> yes. Decent size book. What, what is The Golden Child about? Because I've been making jokes about The Golden Child, how it's about me, but then Sam says, no, yeah. you don't want it about you. <laughs> yeah, my, my four kids are all trying to work out which which one is the golden <laughs> child um and yeah i see a lot of people uh, sort of pointing it out on social media to their siblings or parents uh, or, right. <laughs> this is That's a book funny. about me <laughs> um the, the novel's got a, a few strands um but i think the major one involves what happens when a, a, a really well-loved child mm. um you know and conscientious conscientiously raised you know with great parents turns out to not be the, the wonderful child that her mother thinks um, and imagines and is in fact really what we used to call a bad seed, you know, a little, yeah. probably a junior psychopath. And that's, <laughs> that's sort of the main thing that the book's about. There's a, there's, there's a lot of other stuff too. Yes, yeah, you, you've really um, blended a lot of, you know, the, the way you write as well, you know, the, the mother is writing a blog as well as... Um, you know, we're sort of following her journey as well, but that kind of broke it up. And I'm like this, oh, that's kind of interesting because she's this different talk and a different way uh, the mother was portrayed. It was great. Yeah, so I mean, one of the things you know, you, you set out to write a book on one thing. So the thing I wanted <laughs> to look at was you know what what it was like to be the parent of the bully. That was mm. sort of the, the the major thing, and sort of a, a look at the nature nurture thing. But of course, as soon as you do that now, and you're writing about you know contemporary times, and you're writing about kids being bullied, mm. of course you fall down the rabbit hole of the internet, which is sort <laughs> of where a lot of our lives is currently taking place yes, yeah. uh, online you know whether it's our real life or the or the life that we'd like to be leading or the life that we pretend we've been leading <laughs> yeah so that so you started with you know a, a sort of theme of a child being a bully you being the parent yeah. of a bully that's where you started yeah yeah that was that was we're sort of looking at it from the other way you know because we're all mm. used to if we've got kids used to them coming home and telling us their story about you know somebody picking on them at school or this kid who's mean to them and you listen to them and you believe them and if they're fighting with someone you tend to take their side and all of that sort of stuff and then I started to think I mean there have been occasions where mm. I sort of sat there listening to the child and comforting them and you know trying mm. to think of ways out of this where you're suddenly thinking yeah but what are you doing <laughs> you know, what what what's your role in in whatever's going on and are you actually the one who's being mean and mm. so yeah I wanted to look at that further and kind of unravel that and sort of make it big <laughs> yes yeah yeah no it's great um and is this this isn't your first book though no, this is book number seven. So oh, this is a okay. I'm a little novel. behind. It. Oh, that's all right. You've got plenty of books to take to the gym and to bed with you. <laughs> Thanks, Wendy. Yep, you filled up my gym bag. Fabulous. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is this is the seventh. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's quite a bit of real estate on the on the bookshelf. <laughs> and the, in the, yes, in it's the adding up. Yeah. <laughs> Strangely, I actually don't have copies of all of them, which is really odd because they. They kind of disappear. I lend them to people, and I look at my little mm. space where all my books are meant to be stacked up, and they're, they're not all there. Mm. Well, look, most of the books in our library are stolen from people, so that's yeah. Maybe you've got some. Yeah, yeah. 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 We'll have a look. Yeah, we'll have post a look it back yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, now, when you put this out, did you um, did you feel like uh, people weren't going to like the character? Like, we we worried about that? Um, I. I I always worry about my main characters uh, because it, the main female characters rather than the children but mm. I'd assumed in this one that there would be people that you would like and people that you wouldn't mm. um, I, I've read a few reviews where people don't like Beth or Andy the two mothers in the novel and I'm a bit perplexed by that because I thought you know they, they've got faults obviously they wouldn't yeah. be very interesting characters if they didn't but I thought they were sort of ordinary women but 
you know, I've, I've seen a few people saying, I hate them, and, you know, they're terrible mothers. <laughs> and just, Well, no, they're not. They're kind of normal, yeah, I think. But, yeah, I do often think about that. But But I didn't want you to like the bad child. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Quite important. That, well, yeah, but also that maybe you could see see a little bit of her perspective too. Yes, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Because you don't really want to hate a child, but as you're reading no. it, you're thinking, oh, she really is just nasty. Yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 yeah, sorry. Oh, and also I think when kids have that sort of jealous tendency or whatever it is, a bit nastiness to them, add it with social media. And it's yeah. just, you know, like amplified. A, yeah, it's just, and you're thinking as you're ready, you're thinking, don't, just don't, don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, and the possibilities are sort of available if you're anonymous. And, I, you know, adults mm-hmm. experience this on social media too, you know, as it's trolls. And, yeah. and if you're someone with a high public profile, I mean, you know, all sorts of awful things are said. And, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, people can do it because, you know, you don't have to say who you really are. So it's the world's full of lots of very, um, people who can perhaps just let their worst instincts go and they might be really nice people Mm. but yeah on Mm. the internet they suddenly aren't because they somehow feel that you don't have to be and I guess for kids who are just sort of working out who they are it can be even more tempting yes yes because they're so introduced to it so young now aren't they I mean most most kids have Instagram now by 12 or you know which is so ridiculous when you think about it but there's (laughs) there's a pressure to have it because everyone else has it yeah, yeah, and it's a way of communicating and, you know, mm. they're Snapchatting and, uh, yeah. you know, goodness knows what they're doing, really. <laughs> um, yes. I mean, yeah, you sort of try to take control of it as a parent and to, to um, know what they're doing and to have access to everything, but it's not that hard to, you know, have a different ID or do things your parents just don't know about, or certainly once you get into high school, I think. Mm. Well, they have two Facebook accounts. One is the nice one that they yeah, let their yeah. parents join. <laughs> yeah. You can be my friend and I never do <laughs> yes. anything. And, it, and it's got pictures of them sitting at the, studying again. <laughs> yes, here I am. <laughs> Off to the library. <laughs> and the parents think that they're spying and being all clever. And then there's the real one where they're well, at the geez, pub. You, and, wait, you know way too much. Yeah. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, one thing to watch out for is if they're talking with their friend and they type in P-I-R, in in mm. capital letters, that means parents in room. So oh yes, they're, yeah, they're yeah, room. yeah. They're yeah. T- looking over my shoulder. I can't say what I want to say. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> keep it clean. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about your sort of um, method as an author. How do you start with an idea? Are you already sort of working through a new idea, a new book at the moment? Yeah. Look, at once once I get to the end of one, there's always hopefully another one waiting in the wings. Although what actually usually happens is I get an idea when I'm I'm just starting at around thirty thousand words. A new idea appears that looks so much more appealing than the one I'm working on. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a really bad moment yeah. where I think I want to toss this one in and start this other one that looks so much better. And I've actually done it a couple of times, and then of course the new one's just as bad. So you have to go back and finish <laughs> the, the first one. But yeah, it's always a worry if you get to the end of a book and there's not another one ready. <laughs> what well, doesn't sound like that you're thinking about? That doesn't not sound yet. Like it's happened yet. No. <laughs> How many words do you sort of clock up? in a in a day when you're writing away What's oh, your... I, I don't often do more than a thousand like a thousand would be a good day but I my first draft is very very messy and quite often those thousand words could be kind of incoherent and not <laughs> uh, and not connected so I, I work in a really piecemeal kind of jigsaw puzzle way where I write all the bits of the novel and and that don't necessarily seem to add up and then I have to go back in and work out where they go and if they do fit and uh, it's actually quite a scary process rather than an A to Z process. Yeah. Mm. So, you, so you don't write linear? You don't start at page one and, and go no. through and have a good no, idea? No, I wish right? I did. It's chaos. It's <laughs> chaos. But it all comes together in the end because you've got to... I know, like, it does. Yeah, it's like so. a miracle. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, whatever works, that's the way everyone's got their own different creative process, haven't they? Yeah, it does make me worry about my, yeah, the, the messy state of my head, though. <laughs> kind of like the messy state of my office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but nobody sees that, Wendy. The publisher, <laughs> the editor, they don't see that. No, they just no, see they the don't. Beautiful... That's true. Yeah. It, just, it, it creates anxiety, though. <laughs> <laughs> but creative Might people generally are messy. That is a hallmark of a creative person is being yeah, very messy. Yeah, that's what we like to yeah, say. Yeah, that's what we tell that? ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we live like pigs. We're, we're the most creative you. people you've ever seen. 
<laughs> yeah, you know if it's a messy house that there's something very interesting happening. Yes, <laughs> mine is just full. And what sort yeah. of a pet have you got? Because writers often have pets that when we ring yes. them up and speak with them, they, they've <laughs> got a little dog at their feet or a cat in their lap or something. What have you got? Oh, well, we have two dogs. We, mm. <laughs> we have a poodle. And oh. we have a German Shepherd because it was a competition to see which was because they're both listed as being smartest dog. Oh. But, but in fact, our poodle and our German Shepherd are both very low down the. <laughs> 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 they are the dopiest dogs of their breed. Although our German Shepherd is, we call him Keanu because he's very, very pretty. <laughs> oh, beautiful! But but just a bit yeah. thick. <laughs> just a little. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> So does the uh, and does the poodle have sort of think it's a German Shepherd in terms of yeah yeah it's definitely the boss it's yeah, usually it's a mini poodle and it's a, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> he doesn't he generally gets so scruffy that nobody thinks he's a poodle he looks like a mop <laughs> um, but um, underneath all that hair there's just a tiny little poodle <laughs> who Beautiful. yeah runs the household. Now we were talking before about uh, Jasper Jones, which is coming out this week. And he fits, uh, Craig Sylvie fits our perfect plan of book, stage and screen. So we're thinking we should ask more authors, you know, what do you see yourself as um, any of your books uh, a good fit for play? Adapted or? into a play. Yeah, or, yeah or well, movie. yeah, well, we've actually got two. I've got my first and this one uh, currently mm-hmm. in the process of being optioned. So that's, ah. that's exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they are looking quite good and quite interesting and exciting so yeah there'll be more news on that hopefully soon i'll be able to talk about it a bit more so yeah yeah and is that um, process where they they pitch you an idea of your book and say we want we we we're thinking of doing this as a movie for example um and you sort of either give it a yay or nay or did did they just yeah they they sort of read your book and say we'd like to use your book and they say in my case it's um, television series so yeah oh, so that right. that would be excellent yeah 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 which is something that that does excite me I, when I was a kid I was very into drama and I've spent a lot of years you know reading a lot of scripts and um, screenplays and plays and and I'd like to think that the, the books are you know they are kind of um, uh, adaptable yeah, you know have yeah. theatrical and and um, film sort of potential yeah and they've got a life beyond a book um, yeah yeah yeah, oh, it would be wonderful. It's everybody's dream. <laughs> yeah, yes. It'd be the, so fantastic. The, the J.K. Rowling's um, phenomenon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me- yeah. Well, even just to see it visually, I think to see your book visually would be, um, and some through someone else's creative eyes, would be really yeah, exciting. Yeah, I think that would be the really fascinating thing is actually to see what somebody else would do mm. with with it, not yeah. not just your own. Um, way of imagining it which is kind of put into the book I mean the way I've imagined it is the book so I kind of I think you know but when people like um, Gillian Flynn you know did, did Gone Girl I think you'd yeah. have to take yourself you'd have to get some sort of distance from your novel to be able to reimagine it as a film yes but I don't yeah. think they're the same mm-hmm. well there's quite a few um, authors that uh, write their screenplays like we spoke to um, the Rosie Project Graham Simpson Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, he, so, I mean, he's classic and he wrote a screenplay, couldn't get anyone to make it, wrote a book, phenomenal oh, success. And then, they want then, the writes, then he's screenplay. writing the screenplay. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's exciting. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, and Craig Sylvie, I think, did the same thing in terms of wrote book. I don't know if he wrote the play, but he's wrote, written the, the screenplay again. So For the film. Yeah. So you could, Yeah, no, that would be great, but I think such a different process too. Mm. And, and, and then letting other people go wild with it. Yeah, the actors and that, that's the exciting moment isn't it when, when yeah. it becomes a real person but it's not necessarily your person and also mm-hmm. you've done all the hard work you can go on set and go oh yes yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that would be and, fun <laughs> yeah coffee with two thanks and then <laughs> just you know waltz just out let me walk up the red carpet just <laughs> once yeah. Yeah. just push the actors out of the way although yeah. I did speak with one author, well, actually, I didn't speak with him, but I saw him do an interview where he's, he he was an author and he also was a playwright and he had a um, screenplay. And he, he said, in, in the scheme of things, authors and playwrights are highly respected <laughs> by, by everyone who works in those particular industries. But he said when he became a screenwriter, 
that they're, they're like the lowest of the low. Oh, but yeah. basically get, getting coffee and, and just, it was quite funny how just he Just hand was it there. over and move away. Yeah. <laughs> and writing down the director's ideas and, yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Good yeah. to know that. Yes. So, something to look <laughs> yes, forward to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, you don't really know who has written the screenplay because you have things like TV series and stuff. Those names aren't necessarily well known, are they? The no. director. And, yeah. and, and also when the actors... Uh, that I, I, you see people saying to them, oh, you're so funny on that show. No, the writers are funny. <laughs> they're they're yeah, the ones who are coming yeah. up with all the funny lines. But in a way, that's that's a really nice thing too because, uh, I mean, I imagine if you're the writer of a screenplay, you do get to do the fun work and then you just get to sit in the background and watch. You know, yeah. you don't have to do the promotion or the, no. uh, I don't yes. know. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. <laughs> do the scary thing. Yeah, talking to those radio interviewers, it's <laughs> hell. Really they're all terrible. <laughs> very um, intimidating when I first started writing because I just thought I could sit in the garret and write. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and be a shy sort of wallflower type, but no. No, you're at, at libraries and festivals yeah. and radios. Yeah. 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 Maybe said, we ought to make screenwriters do that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a bit unfair. <laughs> Parade them out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Preferably in stocks or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, make them give speeches. Them. Beautiful. <laughs> so you can't give us any clues as to your next novel at the moment or we just enjoy this um, one at the moment? Yeah, it's it's another one that features, you know, some interestingly bad women, um, oh, yes. perhaps. Yes. <laughs> and, autobiography. Um, <laughs> kind of based on an, yeah, totally autobiography <laughs> from my own experience. <laughs> it's it's based on an old story, a sort of story, an English, real a, a real thing that happened in the... 17th century and has since been written about but it's about a girl who um, says that she's been abducted and escaped and then blames a particular person and then you know then I unravel the story and you find out whether that person really did do it or whether the girl is lying or hmm, yeah, yeah. And so is it set that's... in that period, or is it modern? No, no, it's no, it's not. So it's it's been written about since it was uh, a book by. Josephine Tay, who is an English crime writer, called the um, Franchise Affair, and I'm doing. It's not a rewrite, but I'm sort of. It's, a, it's using that basic story, and it's set now in in Australia somewhere. Hmm. And this came yeah. to you at the thirty thousand word mark. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, about forty. Mm. <laughs> 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 I'm, I know a new story is going to occur to me any minute. <laughs> yeah. You're wandering around the house, going, "Come to me, come to me." <laughs> yeah. Well, Can I start something else? Yes. Well, thanks so much for chatting with us today. The Golden Child, just out by Wendy James. I can highly recommend it. I really, really enjoyed it. It was a great read. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. And you got fit while you were reading it, which I think is fantastic. Yes, you and, actually yeah. inspired me. I Usually I'm like, yeah, I have to go into the gym, but I'm like, oh, no one will interrupt me on this <laughs> treadmill. Um, so, yes, it was great. A great fit. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Lovely. <laughs> Thanks, Winnie. Bye.